And so like, this you know, continue with the theme, continue with the theme, like, of, you know, mother earth and soil, there's help me out here with the pronunciation. Is it, is it tonot, tonot scene? Tonot scene. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, one of the later poems in the collection, it's, it's quote, you will understand you are never alone. Um, there's a really, the really interesting poem about, um, uh, being at, I guess like a barbecue or like a function of some sort and kind of feeling oh with your family i think i believe in mexico and once once volver volver comes on and you're eating you know carnitas and sharing other things the line is quote mother earth calls to me in nawal and calls me mija there's such a a motherly you know affection there and calling me mija and then the the one about um you know protesting marching for george floyd and just that you end the poem with um, the idea of kneeling on Donut Scene or, or Mother Earth that's really affecting. Um, just, I mean, obviously with the, with, the, with the tragic and horrific way he died, um, but just, you know, Mother Earth and coming back to that. Um, you know, another theme that, that pops out seems to be like, which I guess could be related to, to Mother Earth in some ways, is the idea of like ancestors and new generations. One of the poems is called Ancestral Wounds. Quote, I am the grief my grandmother never released. I am decades of women gathered around kitchens, burnt fingertips, but a poor cook out of rebellion. And I think, I think so many of us can relate just to the idea of like rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 But, um, you know, that particular poem, I mean, was that something where when you were younger, like you realized that like, man, they're passing this down to me. This is generations and generations. Or was it like, like all of us as kids or teenagers, like, eh, I'd rather be doing something else. Or it was a little bit of both. Did you understand what you had in those times, I guess? No. Um, well, you know, going back to like, with 2019 and forward, like I've just really um like taking responsibility for so I guess existing as like a Mexican-American person um my grandmother she is like a very conservative Catholic woman mm. and you you know I, I grew up that way my mother grew up that way and um it's not until like you know my adulthood adulthood that I've been like I don't know I've like really branched out but um you, you know these are like elders that do practice like Catholicism and mm -hmm. like I realize it's based on like survival right because mm. the Spanish moved in and um but with that poem it, it's funny. I so I did like a ancestry.com uh, mm. DNA kit, and like the, I guess this is what inspired that poem, which is like really strange. But <laughs> <laughs> and there's that whole thing about like um, using your data for like evil or whatever. But uh -huh. but it's also like a tool, right? And um, so of course my DNA came back as like half indigenous and half spanish wow. which is every mexican on earth uh, but, but um so there's a line in that poem that talks about existing as the colonizer right. and colonized from birth and like mm. you know i'm here celebrating my indigeneity through danza azteca and um different indigenous practice practices but i guess i was reflecting on like should I also honor this other like mm. lineage, right? Mm. Um, because of that like awful history. Um, and yeah, that's just a little bit about that poem. Well, yeah, in the same poem, it's like, I mean, so many great images and lines. I am heavy, weighed down by cries of ancestors, scarred of, scarred of slapped wrists for speaking the Spanish language in El Paso during the mid thirties. And then like you, like you just said, I am the colonizer and the colonizer from birth. And then a lot of I am statements. I am a dance of praise, of thanks. I am a horse on hind legs. I'm a horse whipped and the nourishment the horse consumes. I am an empath, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
and just the idea of yeah just like that lineage um while obviously different generations are, are different in many ways but there's those things that connect um there's one about your mother as the life of the party you talked mm-hmm. about how she's a she's a performer dancer great lines quote i am made from my grandmother's stubborn rib i'm thinking of like adam and eve right and my great grandmothers had too much to drink liver made from my made from the dirt on the faces of children at play and from the sweat of my father working underneath the summer sun great alliteration of course summer sun the sweat of your father the you know the, the liver the faces of the children at play um how much did you was there any fear about writing about your family <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I actually have gotten in trouble, (laughs) (laughs) but um, I don't know. I maybe should have been a little bit more censored. Um, I I think there was a lack of fear (laughs) in writing about my family, but um, yeah, specifically the um, poem about, it's titled El Viva, and um, there's a line about um, some of my relatives being um, unfaithful. And so um, I, I think maybe, um, I don't know, but I don't know that I'm wrong for writing that either. Mm. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, uh, there's a little, little bit of awkwardness at, um, sure. you know, the family parties after my book came out. Um, sure. But for the most part, um, they're very supportive and it's, um, it, it hasn't been too much of a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With like lineage, there's a, the dancing woman poem, you know, there's great image of like your father's calloused hands from lasso and mom's boots. And then like your mom, like imagining who her, her offspring would look like most, you know, and then, you know, it's not, it's not a literal ancestry, but just like the collective wisdoms of like, you know, the people that you write about and, you know, like the Ginsburgs and Elliot and Dickinson, there's this idea of like, like, it's like collective wisdom being passed down. I love the poem, not this called poem, poem, not a persuasive essay. I I don't know if I get the full title, right? My poem is not a persuasive essay. My poem is not a persuasive essay. Um, The, the ending is kind of like a reverse like you would think of like the prompt being first. And I love how you ended it. You end it with write a poem describing your thoughts on war. And I feel like that would make you, that made me want go back and read it again. Kind of like um, how many more poems do we need to write until the children are hopscotching feet against white line shapes against asphalt rather than in cages. How many more traumatic brain injuries until your stomachs feel satisfied stomachs, plural, man. How many more doors do my small knuckles need to knock on? Not knuckles, but small knuckles, you know? I was was writing a little bit this morning and I'm thinking, you know, just like getting thoughts down from like a dream I had. But I'm like, dang, I got too many question marks in here. You have a a lot of questions in this poem, but it works. It really works. So like, was this, was this based on like a real prompt or? It was. And the prompt was write a poem. um... Describe your thoughts on war. Right. Yeah. Uh. But of course, it's uh, not just limited to war, but the entire, you know, like U.S. and um, Mm. existing in the Trump era and all sorts of stuff. It's funny. I um, I read that one quite often when performing, and um, uh, I've noticed a lot of other poets have Trump you know, like a few mm. Trump poems and I was <laughs> that we should have like a FU Donald Trump anthology <laughs> because there's so many poets that like reference him in office and uh right. Yeah. <laughs> what was the was it uh, was it um who the rapper who had the F Donald Trump song? Uh, it's not coming right now. I wanna I, say I, was it yeah. YG maybe? Anyways, there you go. That's that, I would buy that anthology. Heck yeah, man. So a lot about um, in, in raiz, which which means like root, right? Or roots, mm-hmm. like the idea of like reclaiming, you know, heritage and and pr- you know, be, and pride. So please continue making fun of her thick Spanish accent while you sit there ordering wet burritos and carne asada fries. 
from the Mexican food restaurant down the street from the multi-million dollar homes in Del Mar. Because my culture is beautiful, so is my abuelita in her plain mandil and sweaty forehead. You know, things like beautiful are my dark eyebrows, which you make fun of. Um, but I know they were passed down from a hardworking mother. So yeah, just the the the, the title says so much, but the, the images are great. Raiz. I, I know I'm asking you like a lot of specifics, but like the, the one poem, Gente, do you happen to remember like who the, or who would, who would be the speaker in that? Um, I can refresh your memory on like the lines if you need. Yeah, no. Well, I guess, so I wrote it like as, as me, right? Um, but that poem has, it really just talks about so many identities existing right. in, um, in LA. So it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, to inter- I'm sorry to interrupt you. I don't know if I asked the question, right. What I'm, what I'm saying, I guess, is who, who's, who's the receiver, who's being talked to, because oh, like, okay. there's like a, you know, there's a couple quotes and they have quotation marks. I thought they only do it said La Linea as folks wait to cross back. You belong there just as much as they do. Like, sorry, I'm asking like, who's being talked yeah. to, I guess. Who's the audience? So, um, the, it's, um, li- it lists the different people, um, identities existing in LA, but then it's also like me as my own identity walking through LA and um, how I guess I react to each person, okay. right? So okay. when, when it's the unhoused, um, uh, asking mm-hmm. for help on the street it's like I wish I had more to give you so it's uh, they're the reader and then okay. Um, okay. you move over to the punk kids hipster kids Spanish mm-hmm. music making okay. kids keep expressing yourself so that's like the message to them and um, mm-hmm. um, yeah so it kind of moves all over and it switches from like list poem to like narrative or yeah mm-hmm. The, the poem the poem resilient girl is one of the lines is just is it is okay to just comma be and i just i thought it was such a cool poem like you know you don't you don't have to as a woman or a woman of color or all those things you don't have to like be strong like it's okay sometimes you just be you don't have to be like a, a hero you know I, I don't know if i'm reading that right yeah um yeah and like the image or just like the idea of like stillness and um give yourself a break yeah right Right. (laughs) i don't have much to say other than just a really cool line one of the poems a lot of uh alliteration again is called tongue your truths and the line is uh singing them them being the truths singing them to create showers of lightning bolts that electrocate electrocute affinity in ep- epiphany into the chest of those around you electrocute epiphany that's an awesome line <laughs> i love it definitely love loss and longing come together um i want to erase all former lovers letter by letter until it's only your name on the chalkboard i mean that's bars right there <laughs> I want to scribble it on the walls. I want to shout it. I want to live in those first few months. I think all of us know about like, you know, like a first love or the first few months or, you know, like a relationship. Um, I want to stop pretending that I'm okay. Just a lot about love and, and, and perhaps loss. One of the poems is called Under Your Thumb. I started writing your hands into poetry again, and decided that I was tired of the grasp around my pen. I want to ask you about hands, like hands, that line again was I started writing your hands into poetry. There's so much about hands, like as a motif. Um, and obviously as a writer, you know, I don't know if you literally write with a pen or type, but like, you know, um, I've held many hands, in another poem, all things about all things grandma's hands have done. They've held babies, they've brewed tea, they'd healed with sana, sana, colita, rana. Um, I just, I wonder about hands and how like purposeful you were with that, or if that just kind of came through naturally. So it's funny because my first collection, Loose Lives, um, which is kind of contrary to like the title, but there's a lot of hands in that entire collection. Mm. That's yeah. Um, 
And so I guess that trickled into this collection. I don't really know like why I do that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that kind of just, it's, I don't know, it's strange. I, I don't even have an answer for you. It but works. I know, like people have um, that Red Micros collection, they like reach mm -hmm. out to me and they're like, yeah, I really noticed the hands um, as like a image in all of your poems. And yeah, yeah it's interesting. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it, well, you know, leave it alone. It works. It's alchemy. You know, how, who, we can't like necessarily pin it down, but um, I left my heart in all different places, including the notepad, the, line, the exact line quote, I left my heart with you, comma, in your hands. Mm -hmm. Authenticity, I, I guess you could call it maybe is definitely comes through as a theme, like being your authentic self. Um, one of the lines from the, from the poem for JPH is, is about six drink, six drink deep defensive, mm -hmm. which, you know, man, that rings true. You know, the, the different stages maybe of being, of being drunk and truth and what's truth and what's not sin and tonic. Mm -hmm. um, one of the poems is Alvira where you describe grandma as a Taurus. So she's tough, but she's sentimental. And man, mm -hmm. you, you talk about how she would break down with uh, the man, those Sarah McLaughlin pet commercials, huh? <laughs> man they get yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's for i think it's for is it for spca maybe or p or PETA? <sighs> whatever it is those those get you um and oh man you she would you know be sentimental for the graduation song and church boy singing ave maria man i i it brought me right back to my grandmother's funeral when ave maria came on right i mean <laughs> So I, that definitely resonated with me there. Um, and you, you end that poem with, quote, my grandma tells me a lot of things, a storyteller like myself. She tells me about losing her son, and I can hear her cries in the light, feet against wood, creaking of her voice. Other than, wow, I, don't, I, don't, I can't explain that better than you can. Um, how emotional was that to write those type of things? Yeah, well, you know, and like going back to like the grief my grandmother never released. Mm. Um, you know, all all my grandparents are still alive, and it's like you know, you there's a lot of storytelling. Um, you know, when I would my uh, grandparents watched me a lot. You know, they were like daycare for us. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's a lot of storytelling and, um, yeah, it, it was actually, you know, like it's very emotional and, um, that's a lot of like trauma packed into that poem yeah. and yeah. a lot of these poems that talk about my family, but, um, yeah, it was really like just sharing those stories and, uh, with the reader as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, just uh, just made me think of like, I mean, it's an obvious point, but like how, you know, even how you knew your grandparents, you know, your grandparents so well, you spent so much time with them, like, you never really know your parents, your grand, like, they, they existed before you. Right, right. And like the loss of the son and, and all those things you can, you can only imagine. Um, there's a, definitely a theme of like, poetry is like, I would say like sexuality, but more like sensuality. I mean, <laughs> there is one poem about making love to poets. <laughs> <laughs> right very creative uh Hemingway makes an appearance right and like <laughs> G.S. Eliot you say would be vanilla <laughs> <Real good. laughs> right um and obviously you know but more like sensuality like you're talking about like the hands as such a motif obviously you like touch and you know senses um one of the poems is a pretty fairly short one it's um it's bilingual or has, you know, the, the English and the Spanish is the woman's, the woman's body as the basilica, like, like bendita es or, or, or blessed it is. I wonder how much of poetry for you is, is sensual or like is, you know, needs to be read out loud and is like emotional more than rational, I guess. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Well, it, it, yes, there's truth to that because when I like, let's say um, somebody is sharing a poem with me and they have it like on paper or, or on in writing, mm-hmm. I to like experience the poem, I actually will read it out loud, like right in front of them and they like move through it how I like experience it in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there, um, I would agree with, you know, that, but, um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say here. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, the collection ends with, uh, a transition, like the first street bridge. I've, I moved away from LA about six years ago, but I, I know, I think the sixth street bridge just got un, un, unmasked. What am I trying to say? I think the Sixth Street Bridge was just uh, Thanks, like op- yeah. opened up, right? Mm-hmm. But but I know the First Street Bridge very well, like you know downtown into like Boyle Heights, and you know there's obviously a very interesting thing about transition, like a literal transition, and you write mm-hmm. that it it something to the effect of it it must it must be like when the creator calls home, mm-hmm. which I thought was such a great ending, like a transition, a movement, um, that I thought was such a cool way to end it. Did you, not that maybe that was, maybe that wasn't the last poem you finished for the collection. Like, when did you know you were done with the collection? Like, let's, let's turn it in. Yeah. Um, so I actually, I sent it to my publisher. He had, um, you know, I've somehow, I don't even know, like, you know, ex- existing in the world of poetry, you're like, I don't know where I met you or how, but, um, you know, just mutuals. And um, so I knew Edward and he had, he knew that I was working on a new manuscript and he he asked to see it. Um, But that also, they would have been my first choice um, of a publisher as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I sent him my manuscript like prematurely. And I was like, here it is. And he, um, and I'm so grateful for this because I'm like someone that's just like rushes my projects. And mm-hmm. um, so he said, I, I don't think he even opened it, but he said, mm-hmm. okay, I want you to like take this back and really go through it and mm-hmm. send you like, you need to send me your strongest work. Mm-hmm. So I was, yeah, like that advice. Um, so I went, you know, I was like, okay. You, you got it. And uh, I come through it. I removed some things. I added more poetry. I shifted things around. And uh, I don't know when like that moment was when I was like, yeah. okay, it's done. But I think that like second time going through it really helped. Yeah. We'll uh, maybe hear you read in a minute. But uh, before we do that, like any any future projects you got coming up that you want to shout out as, as well as it, like your social media and like how to contact you? Yeah. So you, um, I'm really active on Instagram and my handle has been a woman of words for like forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, projects that I'm working on. Um, so I just created um, a, a reading series called mutual aid poetry show. Mm. Um, I'm still kind of like, not sure if I like that name. I've also, um, was thinking of poetry as harm reduction, but anyway, Mm. it's, um, a poetry reading series where, um, and it travels. So we've done, um, this month will be our second. It's this Sunday, but, um, and so we've done a shop in Whittier, a radical bookstore over there uh, called Midnight Books. And then this month it's at All Power Books, which is also a um, um, uh, like radical bookstore community space. And the idea is to um, raise funds or um, donations of uh hygiene items uh, for different grassroots organizations that work with the unhoused or, um, uh, you know, different community work. So um, this month we have uh, 
poets like Richard Modiano and Luis J. Rodriguez. All right. Um, and so I'm hoping to keep it going just because, uh, you know, that community work is very important. And um, yeah, it's been very inspiring so far. So um, that's a project that I have. I also have a third manuscript um, in the mm. works. And it's, All right. um, I'd say more than halfway done. So I'm trying to really um, have like the self-discipline and like routine to like work mm. on it mm. um, because yeah, this time around, I'm like really trying to be more intentional about the output and um, overall theme and how it's structured and, mm. you know, Edward's advice, Edward, that flower song, like I feel like it's, uh, I just really want to be more like strategic and uh, yeah, intentional with my third collection. Very cool. What's the first one you hear, hear from you? So I think I'll read my poem isn't a persuasive essay since we spoke about that one. Cool. My poem isn't a persuasive essay. How many more poems do we need to write until the children are hopscotching feet against white lines, shapes against asphalt, rather than in cages? How much longer do we continue psychotically scribbling, smash the patriarchy, no war with Iran, water is life, Black Lives Matter, stop Asian hate, give the poor kid medical attention, the cold floor is no place for their last breath, God damn it. How many more hands angrily performing stanzas, lips releasing spit of rage and helplessness. Poets stand up because we hardly know how else to help. Because if we don't vomit out metaphors, it might be my breakfast. Poets stand up in response to your lack of credibility. Toddler president tweets, my lord, my poem isn't a persuasive essay on, for your votes. My poem is a cry for help released by pen and page. My poem is a shout. It is an airstrike on your country club. How many more Langston Hughes? How many more grandmothers holding signs that read, I can't believe I'm still protesting this shit. How many more Maya Angelos? How many more Allen Ginsberg's howls of anti-war? How many more John Lennon's bedins for peace? How many more banned books? Your White House is filled with cisgendered white men dominating Mother Mary in fishnets underneath her faintly blue mantle. Donald Trump, oh, how I've grown sick of that name. Regulating uteruses, teasing her clit with your AR-15s, blood on fingertips. My poem isn't a persuasive essay on gun control, but how many more children answer me? This isn't a rhetorical question. How many more poets? How many more martyrs? How many more pipelines? How many more oil spills? How much more spilled blood? How many more traumatic brain injuries until your stomachs feel satisfied? How many more doors do my small knuckles need to knock on? Write a poem describing your thoughts on war. Thank you. That, that, yeah, that move to that last line is wow. After those questions that are so probing and so emotional. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. So um, I think I'll move over to a more grounding poem. Okay. Um, and then I'll read a new poem. Um, Sounds good. Because of what we are talking about as well. Uh, this is titled Soft Girl. I am kind because my mother taught me to be. I am a lover because the planets demand that of me. I have hurt myself over and over and over again in the process of attempting to heal others. At night, I retreat and I kiss my own wounds. I would rather leave here exhausted and bruised than to know that there was more love I could have whispered into the world. That last stanza is fire. <laughs> That's that's not the greatest way to describe it. I'm, words words escape me. That's uh, very memorable. Yeah, thank you. What's the new so, one called? So I would say, what's the new one called? And and has this or any others that are coming out in the third collection have they been previously published or or not yet? 
Um, I, I think so. Yeah. So, um, in my new collection, I'll have how to reimagine America and that was in an anthology titled reimagine America. Um, I honestly, I'm like terrible about submitting to anthologies, um, (laughs) now, unless, uh, people reach, you know, the publishers or editors reach out to me personally and ask for something. Um, I just don't make the time and I should, but, um, yeah, this poem I wrote just this week. Um, but we are talking about the sixth street bridge and how that just opened up. Mm. Um, and so this is titled why I refuse to celebrate the opening of the Sixth Street Bridge. Because of carbon emissions and fossil fuels, because of the rich profiting sitting behind their desks, because of the oil that seeps into the asphalt and then into the ocean, because the money invested could be redirected, because this bridge will provide housing for the unhoused, but the politicians still will not. Because there are hungry bellies living inside every structure of Los Angeles. Because this bridge only feeds the machine. Because of overpopulation. Because the George Washington Bridge supports nearly 102 million vehicles every year. And because the total cost of the Golden Gate Bridge was equivalent to $704.9 million in our time. Because inevitably, this bridge will also support suicides and make news headlines. Because this bridge will host road rage, and this road rage is the least obvious form of internalized patriarchy and capitalism. Because this bridge sits on its stolen indigenous land. So thank you. Um, yeah, those are the three poems I'll share today with you. Thanks so much. The, obviously the last one's topical and, and you know, thanks for, thanks for writing about important things. Thanks for being an activist. You know, you're not just writing your stuff and about flowers and sunshine, which is great too, but um, you know, but you're really making a difference with your poetry and you talk about the mutual aid and helping unhoused people. So thank you for the important work. Thanks for sharing those, including the new one, got that, got that sneak preview. And uh, you know, last year we got to, you know, perform quote unquote together. It was a hybrid for the voices of California too. You know, maybe we get to do uh, something in person and, but I just want to thank you for your time and, and wish you great luck with your continued work. Yeah, thank you so much. I really enjoyed our conversation today. And yeah, future projects or um, readings, definitely um, always, always uh, honored. Cool. Well, you've done so much in, in a short time. So looking forward to, to all the output. And, and thanks again so much. Have a great rest of the day. Yeah, bye.